Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues, I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's talk about Spider-Man Life Story, the best Spider-Man book to come out in over 10 years. Mm. This is written by Chip Zdarsky with art by Mark Bagley. Okay, so Chip Zdarsky is a author that I have talked about at length mm -hmm. on this channel over the years yeah. when we first started. Yeah, Yes, uh, usually if you've heard it from me, it was usually in the negative. Where I'd be saying things like, uh, Chip Zdarsky writes that fucking Howard the Duck book. And uh. Chip Zdarsky isn't so funny. And damn it, Chip Zdarsky, quit shitting on my porch. Chip Zdarsky, he thinks he's so hot. Yeah. He's really not. Yeah, like fuck Chip Zdarsky. That's usually what you'd hear from me. Uh, actually, uh, that's me eating crow because, like, <laughs> actually, Chip Zdarsky is like great. <laughs> and um, so I'm the one who's the asshole. Uh. Uh, so, and this is no better evidence than this trade paperback that he put out. So what it is is that he heard your comments. And he's like. I'm going to be better. I'm going to show you, Sal. <laughs> that is, <laughs> 10 years no. ago, or whatever he heard. Right. Well, when did this book come out? You said this the last came out 10 years. Within, oh, this came out last year. Oh, OK. Yeah, no, this is the most fresh I of see. our books right now. The only reason why he knows who I am is because people tweeted at him. They were like, come on the Elseworlds Exchange. And he did. He came on. We chatted for like an hour. And he was like, we're never doing this again. And <laughs> he didn't say that, but like, uh, clearly, yeah. we're never going to have Chip Zdarsky back on the channel. <laughs> But thank you for doing it. But really I, appreciate yeah, it. I really appreciate it. And I've been singing your praises. He also has been writing the ongoing for Daredevil, and it's also brilliant. Mm. Like, it's so good. People are going to be talking about it. Like, oh, you remember Frank Miller and Brian Michael Bendis? And also, don't forget the Zdarsky run. It's amazing. Okay. So, as long as he's not running Type for praise. Even though the fact is, I, I, like, he made fun well, of Spider Man in his head. hates I, Howard the Duck. I think right? Howard the Duck yeah. is stupid. Right. Uh, so also, writing for him at all is like... in his Howard the Duck run, he made fun of Spider-Man a lot. Oh. And I was like, God damn it. Ooh. But I didn't know, apparently, uh, that's his favorite character, and he like loves oh. Spider-Man, and he was just using it to take the piss. Uh, but then when he's given an opportunity to write about him, he was like, no one's been more respectful of the character in like a Daredevil book than Zdarsky, and no one's been more like honoring of the character than in this this freaking book. Okay. Uh, originally, it was a pitch where he was like, so what if the Marvel Universe aged in real time? Okay. Oh. That was his pitch. He's like, um, so each issue will be another decade in the Marvel Universe. And his editor was like, uh, the Marvel Universe? So are you going to talk about like what friggin' Speedball's up to? Are you going to talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy? Like, are you going to fit everybody in? Why don't you focus on one character? Hmm. And he was like, oh, okay. So he did Spider-Man because favorite character. And thank God he did because Spider-Man is the quintessential Marvel character. Yeah. He's the everyman. You see everything through his eyes, you know, up at the giant man's walking over him down in the sewers of the Morlocks. Like, Spider-Man's been there and done it all. And for me, and I guess for Zdarsky, like, Spider-Man is inexorably tied to the Marvel Universe. It's why I've never really caught into the Sony movies and the originals. Like, I would, I would love them and enjoy them particularly because I want to see Spider-Man on screen. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, he yep. needs to be steeped inside a universe with other heroes. Yeah, he can't be the only superhero. Mm. That sucks. Can you imagine yeah. like, if Spider-Man was the only one? Right, you're living in Ohio and you're just falling from a rafter and you're like, <laughs> I wish I lived in the tri-state area. <laughs> like, there's, there's no help there. Superman can be the only superhero. Maybe Batman because it's like, I only care about this one two mile radius area. Yeah, like, and like if you're in another city, like you're not sure you want Batman in your city. No, anyway. you don't. <laughs> if, if you have Batman, you live in a crappy city. It also means that you're going to have supervillains in your city. That's right. true. He needs to be set against all those characters mm. so that he can react to them. He's a reactionary character. Okay. So the idea is Spider-Man literally just ages in real time. So he first comes on the scene in 1962. The first story is set in 1966, so he's four years older, so he's about 19, and he's on the cusp of graduating college. He's like getting there, mm -hmm. and so, but it's 1966, and so Bagley draws things like it's the 60s and the Vietnam War is going on right now, right. and Spider-Man is like, maybe I should go. Hmm. Like I could do a lot of good over there. Like everyone <laughs> I know is getting drafted right. and or enlisting, and I could do good. Maybe maybe I should tell the government that like I have superpowers and they'll send me over there and I'll do good stuff because it's '66, so they're still kind of like eh, the war. Yeah, there's still a little bit of like there's st there's still some areas of gray where some people might be able to justify going. Right. Until they find out, like, oh. <laughs> so Pete's musing about where he should go and what his responsibilities are as he's bumping into Harry, who's being dropped off by his father. Harry and Norman Osborn, same deal. Peter met Harry in college. And that's the other thing, is that, like, Zadarsky knows his history, and mm. he, like, 
perfectly weaves it into this insane alternate reality future for Spider-Man. Right. So there'll be like shades of things you remember. But they're just going to be like slightly different. Or drastically different. But you're going to be like, oh, you, <laughs> you did know the what thing! he's referring to, yeah. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so each issue is a different decade and it goes all the way up to 2019. So, so was this released as floppies? Yes. Each oh, issue was a different okay. decade and each, by the way, each issue encapsulated that decade with a cover that was done by Chip Zdarsky. So each oh. era is like, there's 1966. 76, 86, 96, 2006, 2016. Okay. When you saw this on the shelf, it immediately set it apart from something else. Yeah. You were like, oh, I know what that is. Peter's still in college. He's kind of lab partners with Gwen. Maybe they'll get together. She's kind of like, you're a flake. Like every time something important happens, you run away. Well, they're also in college during the Vietnam War. This yes. is a very interesting like, Oh yeah, no, everything's perspective. Tense. Yeah, it's true. Because like, you are pretty much exempt from going to the war if you're studying. That's right. Yeah. But, like, a lot of people are like, maybe I shouldn't go to college because I should be helping out. Well, and also some people are like, I can't afford to go to college, so yeah, I'm stuck going to war. Yeah. So Peter meets up with Harry, who's kind of a beatnik okay. in this, okay. uh, which is not too far off from the character. Uh, of course, Norman's a captain of industry, so he voted for Nixon. And uh, he is very much interested in meeting Peter. And he's like, hey, so yeah, like maybe you could, maybe you could come intern for me. And he's like, oh, I already have an internship at the Baxter building. He's like, too bad. I've been watching you. And he's like, cool. oh, that's creepy. He's like, yeah, it should be creepy. Like, he doesn't try to, like, underplay. Like, I've been uh -huh. watching you. And he's like, oh, thanks. I mean, I've been watching your trajectory. Right. You know, as you swing through the air. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like, me. okay. So, so he works at the Bastard Building. The Fantastic Four are established in this. Yes. Okay, cool. Fantastic Four came, came and went, more or less. Oh. Uh, Peter's been selling pictures to the Bugle. The Bugle's been undervaluing him. Mm -hmm. uh, he's given a voucher to Betty. He sees uh, on TV... Iron Man has already gone to Vietnam and he is helping with the war effort. Mm -hmm. They're having a going away party for Flash because Flash Thompson has enlisted. So mm. they go to this bar to meet up with him. Norman insists on going. And Harry's like, this isn't kind of your scene. He's like, you're nonsense. I'm hip. So they all go to the bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, so they meet up with Flash and uh, Pete shows up and he's like, hey, Flash Thompson, like, I'm sure you're really going to enjoy shooting people and picking on people <laughs> who can't fend for themselves. Wow, Pete. Nice. <laughs> and Flash is like, nice. <laughs> I enlisted. I'm, I'm serving my country. He's like, sure. Oh, wow. Well, good for you, man. It's a good transition from picking on people that couldn't defend themselves to shooting them. Wow. Have a good time. Oh, man. And everyone's like, uh, Pete, can I talk to you for a second? What the fuck? It's your problem, man. All right. I don't like him. <laughs> yeah. He's a dick. He treated me badly. Yeah. What do you want from me? And I like, want him to step on a landmine. <laughs> and Gwen is like, he's probably going to die. Like, he's stupid. <laughs> you may want, you may, you may not want the easy. last yeah. thing that he hears from you that he deserves it. That's why yeah. you're wrong, Gwen. Yeah. I do. And don't you start to. <laughs> I got a list. <laughs> but, uh, Set you off. So he goes to Flash and he's like, hey, I'm sorry. And Flash trying to talk up some barfly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's like, what do you want, Pete? You want to give me more of a hard time? He's like, listen, like, you really made my life hard. And now that I'm bigger and stronger, I kind of want to take it out on you. And you really represent like a bad time in my life. But like, it's not, that's not who I am. And I'm sorry about that. Like, and that's not who you are now. Yeah, and that's I not hope. who you are anymore. And he's like, okay, like that's cool, thanks. And he goes, let me ask you a question, man. Like, what are you doing? Why are you going? Right. And he goes, because that's what Spider-Man would do. Hey! Oh. Because Flash Thompson's the president of the Spider-Man fan club. Right. You're wrong, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I know. Me and Spider-Man go back a ways. I don't uh, know if he would. No, no. He would totally go. Oh, no. He says, like, Spider-Man's not there. And he's like, no. He, he's doing enough here. Right. But, but if, he would. But, but he if would there weren't go. people to save here, he'd be over there. Right. And he's like, mm. <laughs> Right on. So then he goes to the bar, and he orders a Coke. And Norman Osborn comes up, and he's like, I know you're Spider-Man. And I've planted bombs all over this bar. And I'll kill everyone you've ever loved if you don't meet me in this alley over here. Let's go. What? And Spider-Man's like, holy shit. <laughs> we're like, we're, oh, we don't have a lot wow, of time. we're getting right into each it. each issue is a decade. <laughs> Norman, why are you here? <laughs> because I'm, I want to talk to you. God damn it. Because I know you're Spider-Man. Let's go. <laughs> so he, why so, didn't you just call me, man? No. So he goes into the alley and he's like half dressed. He's like, hey. He's puts this, on his goblin costume yeah. and he's like, let's do it. <laughs> Oh my god, what? So they fight. And he like, throws it's, pumpkin bombs at him. We're gonna him. fight now. Now, Why? It's, now it's time to fight. Can we not fight here? The bombs that you're exploding might trigger the bombs in the bar. Yeah. It's oh, he, he lures 
Norman away. Oh, there weren't okay. people in the bar. There were. No, oh. he see, no, he goes, look over there. And there's a pumpkin like oh, sitting at, at the like, on the bar. Yeah. <laughs> He's now, like, they're all over the place. Okay, so we, has he fought the Green Goblin before? Yes. Oh. Yeah, like assume oh, okay. that everything from Amazing Fantasy 15 to 1966 has happened. Oh, I see. And assume that everything that has happened in the comics will happen, but in a twisted kind of messed up real time kind of way. Oh, okay. Right. I'm so, going like, to assume I know what those things would be. Right. Well, you don't need to because every issue is a 10-year period. Is is literally like a snapshot of that period. Yeah, it's not like he's like, who's the Green Goblin? No, we've all, it's been four years. Yeah. I've been Spider-Man for four years okay. or more now. But okay. Green Goblin didn't know who he was, or Osborn didn't know. He did, he found out. In well, the comics, I mean, original. <clears throat> yeah, but Peter doesn't know that he knows. No, not right now. Right, he just finds out just now. That's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, they get into a fight, and ultimately, Norman gets hit by a big thing that causes amnesia. Oh. Like always. Yeah. And he's like, shit. He doesn't remember it. He's not triggering my spider sense. So I guess he's okay. Mm -hmm. So he basically takes off his goblin costume and he says that goblin attacked Norman Osborn and like keeps everything under wraps. <laughs> what? That's what he's done. Goblin at yeah, he attacked you and then he put you in his costume. No, no, he took off the costume. Oh, okay. No, it's more like he attacked so he's you naked. and he took off all yeah, your clothes. He took off all his clothes? <laughs> Billionaire industrialist raped by goblin. <laughs> Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, why am I naked? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, he had his way with you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't worry, we won't tell the press. We'll yeah. keep your secret. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I wasn't fast enough. I'm sorry to save you from that <laughs> fate. So Cap is fighting some bad guys downtown. Spider-Man swings in, helps him out. And then he's like, hey, Cap, listen, Vietnam, wh what do you think? Mm -hmm. I feel You've like been I to should, war? Right, like, like, I feel your... like I should go. And, and I imagine Cap... Cap is saying, it's not our war, man. No, Cap is like, I just woke up. Like from a war, and <laughs> yeah, now I'm I in another know. war, and this war is dicey. So I'm gonna go over there because I need to see it for myself. I have to mm. know what's all what it's all about. Mm -hmm. He goes, but you're doing a good job here, man. Like you don't need to go. Right. Like plus, old Captain America's going. You, you got to cover. <laughs> I don't think you have a whole lot of buildings to swing from over there. <laughs> yeah, it's. Yeah. Mm -mm. What do you think you're gonna do? Yeah, but he says, you know, I, I trust you. You get, you're a good kid. You got a good sense of responsibility. Like you'll do the right thing, no matter what it is. Yeah. So Pete's like, you're right, Cap. Like. I, I do have a responsibility. So he calls the cops and he's like, yeah, Norman Osborn's Green Goblin. <laughs> and, they, and they raid his, 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 his buildings and his house. They find all the goblin gear. Whoa. And Norman Osborn is the most surprised by it all. He's like, what? But he really doesn't remember. So it's just kind of tragic. Wow. Dark. It's not tragic though. Yeah. Well, yeah. Only for Norman. Right. Well, because he doesn't remember. So he's still an asshole who's the Green Goblin. Well, yeah, but he now has amnesia. He's like just an old guy. But he's going to remember. Yeah, he will. So uh, Peter realizes that they're going to be sending off Flash. He's leaving. Mm -hmm. So Pete tries to haul ass over there uh, to the train station, and he's like half an hour late. He missed it. No. Flash is gone. And Gwen's like, what's your problem? And he's like, I, I made up with him at the bar. Right. Yeah, we talked. Yeah. She's like, what's your problem? Like, and she, she grabs his shirt, and she sees his Spider-Man costume underneath. Oh. And whoops! And then they get together, and you're like, "Well, that's different." <laughs> oh, that is very different. Yeah. So then we cut to 1967, and a U.S. platoon is in Vietnam, and they come upon a village, and there's a woman with a baby, and they're like, "Could be a bomb! Like, let's waste her." And then the dude gets hit in the head by a shield. Cap has weighed and measured this war, yeah. <laughs> and found it wanting. He's like, "No." Yeah. But Iron Man is all in on the American side, so basically civil oh, war is happening yeah. in Vietnam. That's cool. It's a, it's a civil war in Vietnam. Between Captain America and Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Neat. Yeah. So then it cuts to the 70s. Pete is... Wait, it cuts to the 70s? We don't get resolution yeah. on that? That's it. No. Well, there'll be a resolution. It's 10 years later. Yeah. You get to find out what happens. That's right. Through the eyes of people who are a little bit more And through context clues. Yeah. So Pete's where he's always uh, a graveyard, and he's talking to the gravestone of a long-lost loved one, and he's giving them a heads up about what's going on, how he and Gwen are married, how he works for Reed Richards in his lab, Gwen works for Miles Warren in his lab. You know, oh. we're all scientists, and we're all doing pretty well. This is oh. crazy. I know. And uh, Gwen shows up, and she's like, hey, I found you. Like, I knew you were going to be here. Come on. Like, don't be morbid don't live in the past mm. like flash wouldn't want you to be like that we find out the Aww. grave is flash he died in 74 mm. so and we cut to the baxter building and pete and reed are having like a back and forth uh, reed richards was mr fantastic uh 
the Fantastic Four is more or less disbanded. We went to see Johnny or Ben, but we hear about what happens with Reed and Sue and everything. Yay, we get a uh, Watchmen reference. Because Who is that? That's Giant Man. Oh. I... Yeah, okay. For some reason, I was like, that's like a demon or yeah, something. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's antenna. <laughs> It's Ant Man's red. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> and then the devil comes. Yeah. <laughs> Put kind of on the nose. Not yet. Yeah. He doesn't do one more day. Okay. Okay. That's There's good. There's no Mephisto. Right. Thank God. Um, that would be messed up. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I can do, tell whatever story I want. I'm gonna get one more day in there. Okay. That's critical. He does. All, he's like Zadarsky knows his history, so he's like every ten years I have to do the most seminal moment right. from his period in that 10 years. Mm -hmm. So Pete's working with Reed. Uh, they have like ideological battles with each other. You know, Reed's, Reed hoards inventions and mm. makes, you know, s leaps and bounds in science, but then like uses them to, you know, nanny his son. Right, like, or whatever. But, uh, you know, Peter, of course, is an idealist, and he's like, we should be sharing these with the, with the world. And they have this back and forth about the war, and then Doc Ock shows up, and he's oh, like, gentlemen, geez. gentlemen, please, like, stop. Those days are all behind us, like, knock it off. Uh, yeah, Doc Ock was a supervillain, but then he got married to Aunt May, which is a reference to a old Spider-Man story where Doc Ock and Aunt May, like, dated and almost got married. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a doozy of a story but uh, there's a little bit of history there so in this story I think story, I remember you telling us this one we time we did talk about that probably during Superior Spider-Man yeah they, but uh, now Doc Ock has performed through the love of Aunt May oh. literally Doc Ock and Aunt May got married and then Peter like put in a good word for him at the Baxter building and so now Doc Ock Reed Richards and Spider-Man all work together oh my god that's so weird Uncle yeah. Ben and Aunt May are the power couple in the Marvel Universe yeah they can make anyone they can make, good they can, they can turn anyone around it's true so Pete and Ock are talking, and he's like, come on, remember that time when I banged your aunt? Like, that clear, cleared my head, and I'm a better guy. Like, you know, he's just a good guy. Yeah. But he's, you know, don't... don't. Please don't say that, though. <laughs> but, but come on, come on, man. You know, Otto. she's flexible for an old bird. <laughs> oh! <laughs> then we cut back with, uh, with Harry, who is going to meet with Norman Osborn, who's in jail, because mm -hmm. he was the Green Goblin, and right. he's still there. That happened. Uh, and he still, like... Seemingly has amnesia. Oh. That's over. He does not have amnesia. Ah. He's an asshole. <laughs> and uh, Harry is running Oscorp, and it's not like the business went under. No, okay. he's actually doing a pretty good job. But he goes, listen, uh, I just want you to know that like you've been really helpful. Like I'm really like relying on you to see through all these plans I have in motion. I'm hearing that the Gemini project is out of control, and I need you to get a lid on it. Hmm. And Harry's like, I don't know, Dad. This is kind of messed up. Everything that you're having me do, like, I I'm running the no. company. I don't need you, you know, like, and yeah, whatever. Yeah, why am I listening to you? Right. He goes, listen, like, you don't understand. Like, Spider-Man ruined my life and destroyed everything and ruined us. So, like, if you're, if you're still on the fence, I've got one more secret left to tell you. And then we cut away. Peter's visiting Gwen at Miles Warren's labs. Mm -hmm. And they're just talking. Miles shows up. Miles Warren's all smiles. He's like super friendly. And he's like, hey, like Pete, what, what's going on? What are you doing here? He's like, oh, I'm just distracting my wife from doing her job. Sorry. Uh, and he goes, listen, like, I, I think it's amazing you're working with Reed and you got your like doctorate in mechanical engineering or whatever. But, you know. The real study's in genetics. It, it is. And you should come work for, come on, like come work for me. And he's like, really? Because like, I hate Reed. He's a total asshole. <laughs> He always like, like rude to his wife for no reason. Right, yeah. <laughs> Keeps her cooped up in that tower. It's gross. We, we find out what happens with Sue. He could totally fix Ooh. Ben, but he won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no, all the trolls. We're checking the all band. the boxes. <laughs> but uh, he goes, that's really nice. Listen, I gotta go. I gotta go meet up with an old friend of ours uh, at, at some discotheque. And uh, Gwen's like, you know, have fun. Also, hey, it's the 70s. Pete's got a little bit of a different costume. Oh, is that like... A historical No, it's more costume? like he's 10 years older. He needs more like armor and stuff. Oh. As he gets older, his costume gets bigger and more protective because he's like old. Yeah, yeah. Especially around the midsection. Yeah. <laughs> no, he just... <laughs> gets chunky. No, he does not get chunky. That's not Earth X. Yeah. And he uh, he asks to see Harry because Harry wants to meet with him. And uh, they, they direct him to the VIP section. He's like, oh, right. My friend from college, Harry, is filthy, stinking rich. Mm. So he gets there, and he meets up with Harry's fiance, Mary Jane Watson. Mm -hmm. And she's like, hey, Pete, what's going on? I'm my third Cosmo. Like, <laughs> listen, Harry mixed uppers and downers, and he is out like a light. So <laughs> do not try to talk to him. Yeah. And it he's is like, pointless. It, do you want to Just dance? talk to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, right on, cool. Are, are you guys cool? And he's like, hey, listen, like, I'm not happy, but he's rich, and we can't all be married to beautiful blondes from our college days. Right, Pete? 
And he's like, okay, well, you've had enough. She's like, and she's like, yeah, I'll but tell you, you what I've had I'll enough. tell you what I've had Thank enough. You. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> no, she goes, well, why don't you just flake out like you always do? Oh. Just, just leave, right? Like, you'll have to flash. Oh. Go ahead, go. What? Oh, oh. He's still getting shit about that? Yeah. Well, because she, she's I like, made up with him at the bar. No, she's I'm like, sorry I was late to the thing. <laughs> she's like, you, you weren't knew. even there. She's like, you knew what a bad idea it was, and you had enough power to stop him. Oh. And he's like, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? She's like, don't be, an, don't treat me like an asshole. Like I, I've li I live next door to you. I know you're Spider-Man. Oh, you could have stopped him. You could have gone to Vietnam. You could have slowed everything down. What's wrong with you? Also, mm. like, I didn't fall in love with you because you're Spider-Man. That was your wife. Yeah. That's Gwen. Yeah, you the faker. You, you messed up time. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Well, what did she so, think he was gonna do? Like just restrain Flash of time she, to a chair? She's drunk. Just you know, web him up so he can't go. She's mad and resentful, <laughs> and she resents Peter for being a coward. Yeah. Mary Jane needs to make a deal with a Mephisto to undo Peter's marriage. Oh no! So she marries him. Oh, that, 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 it, that would be amazing. It, 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 we'll see what happens with Mary Jane. <laughs> but I love the portrayal of Mary Jane because, like in the seventies, yeah, Mary Jane was kind of a party animal. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's and she was in his face a lot. And yeah, it was because she knew he was fired man so right but time's a little different so yeah. the details are different but they're a little more like real okay so uh yeah pete's in the pete's in the lab reads there he's like hey were you here all night have you slept he's like no and he's like listen reed i want to talk to you about something you, when, <laughs> when you were in the fantastic four you invented this like fabric that like can't break and it can stretch with you and like it can catch on fires like yeah unstable molecules what's your point he goes well i'm just saying like maybe everyone could use that I'm like why why just you and he goes, good question, Peter. Actually, you see, here's the thing. The economy is more complicated than just that. If I were to introduce a fabric that would make it so that every other fabric was obsolete, it would destabilize things. It would cause a ripple effect. And so I can't introduce that kind of technology into the world without having serious ramifications. And he's like, dude, you're talking like you're an alien or something. <laughs> a person invented it, you. We'll react. We'll respond. It'll be okay. We'll adapt. We'll eventually go beyond unstable molecules. We don't molecules. need it, man. Right. Like it's, it's fine. Yeah, you're not like you're not like from the future. Yeah, like you don't get to think <laughs> for us, man. Maybe that's why your wife left you for a fish man. Oh no! Oh snap! Then, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so then Reed gives him a across the room Yikes. backhand, which the spider sense warns him about, but he's like, I I take it because I went too far. Yeah. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and then he leaves and he's like, I guess I quit. Like, he didn't say that. Oh, yeah, but, like, well, I guess I'm But he not goes to back. Gwen's lab and he's like, hey, I hope that Miles Warren offer was on the table. <laughs> so he's Spider Man, he swings over to Miles Warren's lab. Miles and Gwen are chatting. Miles getting a little handsy with Gwen, but it's oh. nothing that they haven't experienced before. Gwen's mm. completely oblivious to Miles being a creep. We all know he is because we've read Spider Man comics before. Yeah. Then, uh, like we get it. Then, like, uh, the, the elevator opens and a black goblin comes out and he's like, hey, hey, I got some business to conduct right now. Uh oh. And you're like, oh, because, like, Sidarsky's like, why would Harry become another Green Goblin? So he's the black right. goblin. Oh, okay. And it's cool. It's a fun little design. Yeah. It's not the most. He's like a ninja. Yeah. Ninja movies were big then. He's also got orange, which maybe is a little reference to Hobgoblin. I think it is. I think it's the most. It's like you want Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin. He's not in here. I'll give you this. Right. But clearly, what he's revealing is that Miles Warren is working for Norman Osborn. He's like, oh. you're doing, you're, you're going off book, man. He just asked for one thing, and you're screwing around. You got to knock it off. Then Spider-Man shows up, and he attacks the Black Goblin. Mm -hmm. uh, they fight, and then uh, he says, like, dude, what are you doing? Like, knock it off. So then uh, Black Goblin scans the premises for what he's looking for, and he goes, ah, there it is. He takes a bu pumpkin bomb, throws it at the wall, blows it open, and when he sees what's, in, what's behind the wall, he goes, oh my god. He takes off the mask, whole game's over. He's like, oh Whoa. shit. And behind the wall are clones of Norman Osborn, Peter Parker, and Gwen Stacy. And <laughs> Miles Warren goes, I, I can explain. Oh and yeah? Harry's like, you're just supposed to make Norman. What's wrong with you? And he's like, well, you know, I know that Norman wanted to have a clone that we could kill to pin his past crimes on so he could escape. Oh, my but God. He also said he wanted one of Peter. And I, I don't know why. And then Gwen goes... And? And Gwen goes, <laughs> and me? And then... But Miles is like, uh, oh, well, come on. Uh, before, uh, uh, uh. before we get there, <laughs> Harry's like, oh, my God. Like, he wanted a clone of Peter Parker because he wanted Peter. Like, he never wanted me. He wanted Peter. He wanted, like, a... like. A protege. He wanted to replace me with Peter, like another Peter. 
It's always about you, isn't it, Peter? And then he attacks Peter. Yeah. And the two of them fight, and Gwen runs away. And Miles like, please, don't go! It's not what it looks like! And yeah. so... Uh, it's not what it looks like as he's taking off his pants. Yeah. yeah. Please! Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Explain yeah, that. Okay, let's all have a seat. Yeah. Please. No, you want some coffee? <laughs> Calmly I, and rationally you were going to, why to uh, explain why there was a clone. Why there's a real doll. I assume you have a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, every good scientist has. Anyway, <laughs> basically, Peter and Harry fight, and Peter's like, don't let your dad ruin our relationship. Like, don't let this happen. Right. And Harry's like, good point. I'm wearing a black goblin costume. I think that ship has sailed, that, my friend. No, unlike every <laughs> movie and comic book, Harry's like, fair enough. This is huh. stupid. Well, he just stops? So he's like, let me just stop it. So he takes the pumpkin bombs and he throws them at the clones oh, to kill them and end the yeah. cycle. Oh. And Miles Ward loses his shit. <laughs> not my babies! Now, he does not become a jackal. He just <laughs> cries. Oh. Good. And, and Gwen is like, Peter, what, 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 you know, the, you know, the goblin guy kills people. They're, they're still people. You got to go down there. So Peter's like, okay. Are they? Yeah. Uh, they're not. Uh, you know what? Let's debate that after I rescue them. So yeah. he swings down there. The Norman clone is dead. It's impaled. The Gwen is also dead. Oh, thank God. The Peter one is like coughing. He's like, of course the Peter one's okay. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's the most problematic clone. one. Yeah, well, because it's strong. So he, like, oh, he picks him yeah. up and brings him back. He's like, I'm sorry, I can only save the one. Of and course And Miles it's is you. like, no, Gwen! And Peter's like, why don't you stop? You've got a lot of explaining to do. And he goes, you don't understand. I wanted Gwen all to myself. I wanted the real Gwen, so I made another one for you. That was the real Gwen Stacy in that tube. <gasps> What? Well, then maybe one day, like I can wake her up and like she'd be cool with like me, you know? And... No! Oh my God! Peter... Why? Why did he put her in a tube? Because that's where they go. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was keeping her there until he could figure out the best way to articulate to her that it's Ethan, cool that they get back. You have to understand that's not the clone tube. That's the stasis yeah, tube. Yeah, that was a stasis uh... tube that looked just like a clone tube that was right next to two other clone tubes. So <laughs> Peter loses his shit. He completely comes unraveled. He he swings down there. Harry's like, oh. Oops. So then uh, we cut to 1978. Oh my god. And the Peter clone and Gwen clone leave. They're like, okay, I'm well, out of here. We're both clones. We have to leave together. Right. So but, wait, the, the Gwen clone's like pretending to be Gwen? No, the Gwen clone thought she was Gwen. Oh. Well then why then you're she still just want to stay with Peter? Peter doesn't want her anymore. Peter just what? completely recedes into himself and she leaves him. But... Uh, He's just, he's just like, his whole life is a lie. So he just, he just walks. Well, how long has she been a clone? Like, since, like a day? No, since probably the, the lab experiments with Miles Warren. Oh. It's their entire marriage. Well, that's even worse. I agree. Because that's the person you've literally been married to. Yeah, but to. Zdarsky thinks Peter Parker's a super weird, selfish person. So oh. Peter completely loses it and locks himself off. And Mary Jane stays behind. She's like... Hey, so I'm sorry that Peter won't come downstairs, but he's like crying. He's been crying for a few years now. And uh, so they leave and Mary Jane goes upstairs and you know, she's like, so they have, they, have new, they have new names and new identities and they're gonna leave. And he's like, oh, that's great. I'm glad that they get to have a new life. They get a new start. Hey, Harry left without one conversation. He left you a bunch of millions of dollars. So you're set up and what do I get? I get a whole bunch of lies and bullshit. I just get to stay here and, 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 and I have nothing. And he just collapses, and Mary Chan says, you don't have nothing, and she holds him. Yeah. It's, a, it's like the end of Death of Gwen Stacy when Gwen's dead and Peter collapses and Mary Jane grows up, and she's like, no, like, I'm going to stay with you. Yeah. So then we cut to the 80s, next era, and Mary Jane is pregnant with twins at the hospital, uh, and Aunt May is still around, and she has dementia. She's like oh. calling Mary Jane Gwen. Oh. Mary Jane Yeesh. has no patience for that shit. Yeah. And she's like, what the hell is wrong with you, Peter? Like, where are you? Peter is on Battle World in oh! the Secret Wars. <laughs> yes. So he comes back with a black costume. Yes. Right. So we get to get see costume. this crazy Zadarsky future of the Marvel Universe. I love it because, like, the Beyonder didn't care about Vietnam or whatever the hell's going on. So, like, Iron Man's there, Captain America's there, the X Men are there. You know, and and some of these characters, you know, don't like each other. Doc Ock is back to being a bad guy because oh no, Aunt May left him. Oh, why? Because he was always too angry. Oh, His anger made didn't their relationship. fully reform. No. Mm. So he immediately goes back to being an octopus man. Yeah. So they have their I'd like fight. to think that he was just like upset once in a while. Right. She's, like at science stuff and she's like, he's just angry. Yeah, he's just always angry. Yeah, you like him being like an unreasonable ben. person. Mm. 
Yeah, well, no one can be Uncle Ben. He's not a real character. So, Peter's, How dare you, sir? How? I know Uncle Ben more than you. So, Peter's repairing his costume. They're in the, their base. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, yes. The battle base. <laughs> the, where the alien costume will come out. Yeah. And uh, Peter and Reed reconcile. He's like, listen, Peter, like, you were right. And Peter's like, no, I was a jerk, and I'm sorry about that. And he's like, I mean, I was right, but I was a jerk. Yeah. yeah. And it's the 80s now. Peter has, since marrying Mary Jane, uh, formed his own company. He's created Parker Industries. Oh. And he runs that. And Reed's like, I'm so proud of you. Like, I'm really proud of you. You made your own company. You're embracing science. Like, you are everything that I couldn't be. It's I'm wonderful. Sorry. Uh, but I know that you're planning to release unstable molecules on the market, and I'm going to bear with you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that does not happen, but it absolutely should. <laughs> No, Peter gets into uh, in adhesives. Oh. That's where his money comes from. Okay. Uh, so Thor and Hulk show Peter. Why doesn't he uh, sell his web formula to he the did. world? That's adhesives. That's adhesives. Wait, so anybody can make the spider webs? No, we, need, we don't need people swinging around. They, they can just have, like, command strips or whatever. <laughs> oh, really? Maybe Peter learned that he's right. <laughs> and that, like, you shouldn't just introduce a completely destabilization, <laughs> destabilizing, uh, destabilizing technology, technology yeah. on an unsuspecting populace. I mean, here's the thing. Like, Reed's argument was, like, formulated poorly. About but the economy and crap, yeah. but it's more like, well, what happens to like warfare? Right. When like, like <laughs> rich countries will be invincible. Yeah. And everyone else who can't afford that stuff is just like fodder. Yeah. Like, think about that. Right. Or maybe it costs too much to manufacture, and so only the elite will have yeah. it. Like, it's just yeah. a real problem. So Peter gets the black costume from the same thing. He thought the machine was going to give him a costume and instead had an alien symbiote in it. He wears it, he brings it back. It still makes no sense, but whatever. No, it was hiding in there. Yeah. Whatever. So (laughs) he leaves and uh, he ends up at Parker Industries because like, I think they live there. I think they live like on the top high rise of the... It's like the Baxter building. Yes. It's own Baxter building. Why not? So Peter runs into Mary Jane and Mary Jane's like, ah, oh, like you're home. Great. These are your children. (laughs) <laughs> and he completely breaks down because he's never met them before. Right, right. And like they're, you know, they're infants. Yeah. But he still missed their birth and he just, you know, he's just like, oh my God. And she's like, well, while you were gone, the world went friggin' nuts. Because oh, like, yeah. Because so all the heroes America, were gone, right? Most of them. Yeah. You know, a couple of them weren't picked by <laughs> the Beyonder, like <laughs> Sue and Vision. Ah. And uh, so the Soviets launched a, a nuke. Oh, geez. And Vision tried to stop it. It was aimed at Manhattan. He diverted it out into Allentown, but couldn't stop it from going off, and it annihilated Allentown, Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. And in the aftermath of his failure, Vision just stands there, and he's been there like that since that happened, and he's intangible. Like, people can't touch him or anything. Oh. So Peter immediately jumps into work. Uh, he devotes a segment of uh, Parker Industries to, like, cleaning up the area and dealing with it. Yeah. And he and Reed, like, work together on the subject. Uh Okay. It's been a little while now since that's so happened. Is that a reference? Did something happen to Allentown, Pennsylvania in the uh, comics? No, at that time? no. No, it's just it's just a good location to choose. Everybody chooses Allentown <laughs> for some reason in the comics. But like, like maybe Sadarsky <laughs> really hates Pennsylvania. Yeah, maybe. I mean yeah. like well, it was like steel capital of the world right. for a period or whatever. I think it's just like it's a, it's adjacent to Manhattan and mm. so, you know, it's a good place to to target. Right. It's like like a population center, but way smaller than Manhattan and kind of rural. Over but there. Not too rural. Uh-huh. Maybe he yeah. just mapped out the trajectory and he's like, if it was fired from Russia, yeah, I guess it, yeah. would, this is it would there. pass over exactly. into. Yeah. Yeah. They could have said Morristown, New Jersey. They could have, uh, but yeah. I will, you know, it's a little too close to New York. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a nuke. Yeah, you need a buffer. Might, yeah. Exactly. Pete and Reed are talking. Uh, Reed points out that, like, Spider Man has copycats now. There's this dude. With like in, in oh, a in geez. a black costume with a gun, who's just like killing folk. Is he killing like random people no, or like bad guys? Oh, yeah. so he's like the Punisher. It yes. is the Punisher. Well, we don't see Punisher, and maybe so it's Punisher. Maybe it I don't is. know, but like it's a copycat of Spider-Man. Right. And uh, so you know, he Pete's calls like, himself the Black Widow. Yeah, except that's a girl. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> so Reed's like, listen, Peter. Like, I hope you don't feel like this is an invasion, but like, I tested your suit, and it's like a living symbiote that's trying to attach itself to you. <laughs> I mean, look, it's like fibrous and like moves and yeah. stuff. Like, obviously it's alive. Oh, Peter's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I found that out a year ago. Oh. And he's like, what yeah, you- man, you don't hear it? <laughs> yeah, he's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, I'm a scientist, Reed. I, I immediately tested what this was, mm. but I'm older now and I need it oh. to keep me kind of like spry. Right. And What's with like, the fact that it changes color to back oh, to his old suit? You know, Pete's like, maybe I should change my costume because it's in poor taste. 
to the copycats who are looking like him. Now people oh. think that like the black costume is like inciting people to like be more dark and everything. Hmm. So like there's a murderer out there who's dressed like black costume Spider-Man. Maybe I should be going back to my old colors. Oh. Maybe so he just friendly. has the symbiote change. Yeah. Because he can be any color. Yeah, just because it's a, comic books are a visual medium. We're trying to like articulate what he's saying while also showing you yeah. a okay. fun image of the costume moving and and yeah. we're also pointing out that it's alive and stuff like that. It's just a device. Mary Jane calls Peter frantically and interrupts their conversation. Peter immediately swings over there. And when he gets there, uh, it turns out that Aunt May had taken the twins and took them for a walk and then just kind of like... Lost it. Lost uh. it. And she just stared at some department store that used to be something else and the children were just screaming in their bassinet and the police uh. took her home. Oh, jeez. And uh, so Peter and Mary Jane try to have a conversation about what to do about Aunt May and Peter's like, well, what do you mean what to do about Aunt May? And she's like, well... She's losing She's it. Lo we need to put her in a home. And he's like, well, we're not going to do that. Mm. That's just not going to happen. Sorry. Right. Like, hey, heads up. That's not going to happen. <laughs> and uh, she's like, well, something needs to happen because, like, you're not taking care of your aunt. Like, you think you are because you're letting her live here. But, like, she's... She needs more than just more space than just to live. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they have this and conversation. And I'm taking care of our kids. Yeah. Yeah. And she's also like, and this costume that you're wearing, like, it's... No. You, you keep relying on it. You think you need it. Right. And he's like, well, I don't. And he purges it, and it goes into like a little tube. He also makes a point to read where he's like, I don't wear it all the time. Like, I, I keep it in a stasis tube mm -hmm. so that it doesn't permanently bond with me. Oh. Like, I just kind of use it. Right. Like, I figured out that that would happen if I yeah. kept wearing it. If we're going to keep, like, the, the romance metaphor between Peter and the costume, it's like, right. it's more like, we do, you know, she's, it's my side piece. <laughs> you know? Like... So <laughs> Peter That's messed up, purges man. the suit, it goes into a tube, and then he's like, he puts on his regular costume. But there's always a little bit left off, like, No, stuff it's not like that. <laughs> and he just, he puts on his regular costume, and he's like, I need some air. And he just leaves. And she's mm. like, nice. So Pete's swinging around the city, and he gets attacked by the copycat, ah. who's got a gun. And it's like that sequence from Craven's Last Hunt, when Craven was dressed like Spider-Man in the black costume, and he tries to shoot him, mm -hmm. but this time Peter dodges it because, duh. Right. And <laughs> Peter... Oh, no, a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he dodges those all the time. So Peter jumps out of the way, and he grabs the copycat, rips off the costume, and it's Craven the Hunter. Oh, oh, okay. And he's like, Craven, what the hell's wrong with what? you? What? Craven stabs him with a poison-tipped knife, oh. which is more in keeping with what Craven would do. Yeah. And... You've gone soft. I've noticed that like you were the you were the perfect predator, the thing that I wanted to hunt the most. But you're slowing down, and you're getting soft. And I'm stronger than you. I just beat you, mm -hmm. and so I'm gonna have to replace you. And it's very much the same thing as Craven Last Hunt. Right. So he says you deserve a warrior's death, and then he shoots Peter, and then buries him in the ground, like in Craven's Last like Hunt. Like he did. Yeah. yeah. And like in Craven's Last Hunt, it wasn't a bullet. It was like a trank or whatever that keeps him from yes. dying right but, but he still buries him in the ground he still buries him in the ground <laughs> so this is great so uh, Mary Jane is tending to the kids and Aunt May and there's mm. this like cracking sound outside and so she investigates to see what's going on and it's the suit the suit is just Back, is just bashing against the glass oh, trying to get out geez. and then once it gets free it runs past her and it just jumps out the window it knows that Peter is in trouble right so it travels all the way to Craven's estate it drills into the ground it covers Peter and then Peter blasts out of the ground as a kind of like giant venom character Whoa. that's awesome oh, nice okay this is a much better explanation of how Peter gets out of that. Uh, than just that he hopes harder. Yeah, and just I like, like uh, no offense. He, no, there's still a little air in there. It's just yeah, but yeah, last a little while. Yeah, so Graven's out there in the in the world being Spider-Man, yeah. trying to stop some assault, and then. The two people that Craven is attacking see what's behind Craven and they run away. He's like, well, "Oh, Craven, you better run!" Yeah, he turns around <laughs> and. Peter's in the suit and he's a bigger black costume. He's yeah. Venom. Yeah, he's Venom. And he grabs him and he's like, you shot me and you buried me. It's over. I'm going to kill you. And this time, I'm going to get it right. And his mouth forms. Oh. And Craven says, look at you. You've become what I needed you to be. You're beautiful. Uh, let, me, <laughs> let me fight you now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Please eat me. Uh, Mary Jane tracks down Peter because... Peter and Mary Jane set up a protocol where if the suit ever went wonky, Mary Jane has a device that'll ah. make it purge him. So, a sonic device? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And naturally. Nice. So Mary Jane's there and she's like, oh my God, Peter. And he's like, it happened, Mary Jane. You gotta shoot me. And she's like, no. Right. So she shoots him and the suit like just basically decomposes off of him. Ugh. Yeah. This, this chapter ends 
with no text except for a like kind of internal monologue of Peter talking about how he's trying to save everybody, but it always falls apart. Mm. Uh, there's no dialogue though, where Peter's just sitting in a chair as the movers take all of Mary Jane's stuff and the children, and Peter is left alone with Aunt May. That's crazy. Wow. Oof. Like this is a this is a very Oof. powerful message. So then, but damn, the, the end of the chapter is. We're in Craven's estate. All these heads are on the wall, and Craven's watching the sunrise. He gets his gun out like he does in Craven's Last Hunt. He's naked. Yes, he's <laughs> naked. He puts it in his mouth, and then the symbiote grabs the gun and saves him. Oh my and god! You're like, oh my god! <laughs> Craven's venom. That's such a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they awesome. both hate Peter now. Yeah. Oh this my god. This is a god. this is a different reason for Venom to hate Peter. Yes. No need for Eddie Brock. No. Yeah. Yeah, forget that. Ah, that's dumb. Moving on. <laughs> and it makes One sense issue. as to why it's the black suit yeah. for Craven. He yeah. was already wearing it. Exactly. It's, it's actually like poetry. like poetry. It rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> so then we go to the 90s, and obviously we have to do the clone saga. So the Peter Parker clone is in Chicago, and he's photographing this tumult that's going on. Look, Doc I, Ock I, I is I get that you're my clone, mm. but you don't have to be a photographer. You can be anything. He, he remembers no, me. No, but I have, yeah, yeah, I have the same skills and I'm stuff. the same as you. Yeah. We pick the same color. We wear the same clothes. Yeah, remember, clones have the same, like, brain and memories and yeah. everything. I am you, literally. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Did he go through a phase where he, like, rode a motorcycle? <laughs> And had like a mullet. Yeah, we never see it. If he did, I'm we just gonna, it would in be my head canon, he because did. in the '80s he would have had like he, he would have been in his like late 30s. It would have been mm, very sad. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Doc Ock is an old man. And he's just terrorizing things. He's like, "Hey Ben, what's going on? I saw you at May's funeral. I thought oh. you were just some guy, but then I went and uh, and and checked things out, and now I know that you exist and what's going on. So I need you to come with me." Okay. The image of Doc Ock. Picking someone up by, by the head? head with those yeah. hands yeah. is terrifying. It's, oh, it's awesome. It's, yeah, that's Laurie, his partner, by the way. Then we cut to Parker Industries. Tony Stark's there meeting with Peter Parker, and he's like, let me just absorb your company. Come on. <laughs> You'll make money. We'll all come out ahead. Mm. And just, just accept the merger. And Peter goes, okay, stop making weapons. And Tony just loses it. <laughs> What? Why How would I need to do that? I needed to wake those weapons. Blah, blah, blah. There's nothing wrong with making weapons. Do you want me to be the villain? I'll be the villain. I'll be the biggest villain you've ever met, and I'll take it out of your company. Oh no, my and god! And Peter's like, cool. Does he become Hammer? No, it's just well, I mean, more or less. But he's just very defensive. Yes. <laughs> about making weapons. Cool. Right. Making weapons. Ah! He, he, he picks up a picture of I Peter's. We were negotiating. Yeah. No. Nope. I love it because Stark's like, oh, come on. No. Oh my god! <laughs> he just completely loses his veneer. Uh, he picks up a picture of uh, Mary Jane and the kids who were older. He goes, well, where would they be without me? Oh, and, no. And they left you, and you're, you know, how are they, by the way? When was the last time you saw them anyway? And he's like, Tony, why don't you get the hell out of here? <laughs> so Tony leaves, and uh, Peter gets a phone call from his girlfriend, Jessica Jones. What? Yeah, Pete and Jessica Jones are banging. And uh, Jessica Jones is also a private investigator that is subcontracted but by Peter. Peter hired her to keep tabs on somebody in the city. Uh, okay. On the sly, and they wound up having a relationship. Huh. Peter puts on his 90s Spider-Man costume. New costume, yeah. Uh, each era has a different one. But yeah. he's out there, he's, he's kicking ass. And then, but he's slower, right? He's a little slower, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. But he, it, it's great, because he's like, I'm still being Spider-Man, like a joyless old man going to the gym every day. <laughs> <laughs> I do this because I have to, yeah. not because I really want to. No, anymore. I just, I, I don't know anything else. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Doc Ock is in the middle of town, and he's tearing things up, and he's like, Oh, no, Octavius is back, bitch! Uh, he, he attacks Spider-Man, and then, uh, ultimately, Spider-Man's just too slow, and mm. Doc Ock gets the better of him and gasses him. Mm. And then when Peter wakes up, he's in a lab, and he's strapped to a table, and Ben Riley's strapped yeah. to a table, and Harry's there, and he's like, I'm sorry, Doc Ock threatened me and coerced all the information about clones and stuff from me, and... Uh, Are we going to get the the effed yes. up clone? No. Oh, no, Kane? <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. No, the limit... There's two clones. <laughs> Oh no, there's one clone. Right. Gwen clone, we don't even see her. Okay. Just, just Peter. She's not here? What, they don't no. say what happens to Gwen clone? Not really, no. As I recall, there's no reference to Gwen clone. Huh. I think she just moves on. Yeah, Thank she's God. just like, this is messed up. I'm leaving. I'm going to Portland. <laughs> Actually, Mary Jane goes to Portland. <laughs> oh. I'm leaving. I'm going to, Ca I'm going to fucking Mexico. I'm going to Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> Spring break Spring forever. Spring break 24-7. <laughs> Until I melt. <laughs> 
Yeah, so. she just melted. Doc Ock is like kind of grasping at straws. He's old. He's sad that Aunt May died. That's mm. really what it was. Like Aunt May's yeah. death kind of triggered it. But like she left him, then she died. He's upset. He's old. He kind of like blames Peter for everything. He's like, you never approved of us anyway. And blah, 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 blah. <sighs> and he's like, but then I, you know, I, I, I felt like death was stalking me. And then I found out about Professor Warren's clone. And I thought like, ooh, oh. maybe I could, maybe I could have that clone. Maybe I could put myself into that clone. Like an upcoming yeah. Dan Slott story. Or, oh. Yeah. So then uh, he found out about like how there were only a few files left over at Oscorp. So he went to Oscorp and he found out about these two living specimens that were Miles Warren's greatest achievement. And as he's looking at the data, he realizes, oh my God, Ben Riley's the real one and Peter Parker is the clone. No. He does, he does the switcher. No. <laughs> so Ben Riley loses it. He breaks free. And he's like, you stole my life. And he, had, he he's just freaking out. And Peter frees himself. And then... Wait. Who stole his life? Peter. Everybody. Well, like, yeah. oh, he, 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 he yells clone. at Peter. The clone. Well, He's like, ben, you replaced me. Yeah. That's not cool. Yeah. Clone. Yep. But I guess the clone doesn't know he's a clone, or does he? Well, which... Okay, there's Peter I mean, and does, Ben. We find out Ben's the real one. Does the one who thinks he's Spider-Man at the start of this book uh, know that he's actually the clone? No. No, okay. just like no, Gwen but, didn't know that she was the clone. Yeah. But that makes it super ironic that Peter rejected Gwen for being a clone even though he was a clone. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you know, Ben accosts Peter. Like, Ben beats up Bach. And then he goes to Peter and he's like, Did you know? Like, right. did you know when you took my life? And he's like, dude, no, I didn't know. Come on. No, I'm me. Right. You're me. <laughs> yeah. You're you. So they have this, this back weird. and forth. And then, uh, and they're, and they're kind of working things out. And uh, Doc Ock's like, oh, two Peter Parkers. Well, I can still get your secrets from your corpses. So yeah. he drives one of his arms at them. And Harry jumps in the way to save Peter. Oh. And so pa- Harry's impaled and he dies. Mm. And oh, Doc this is Ock's interesting. Like, yeah, Ben, ben jumps Riley out of the way. jumps out of the way, even though it's the real Peter Parker. Yeah, because he's got the spider sense, mm-hmm. and he protects Harry. Protects the clone. Yeah, well, because that's the one he's known, basically. Yeah. So Ock kills him, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry," and then he just leaves. <laughs> oh, oh I, whoops! I, I should probably go. Yeah, that wasn't cool. Yeah, so he leaves, and <laughs> Ben tries to chase after him, but he has no web shooters or anything, and he falls, and then Peter catches him. And then... Snaps his neck? No. <laughs> no, thankfully. the no. only one. Yeah, we, no, no, no. That would have happened in the 70s. We, we, this is the 90s. But it's the 90s, so Harry dies like he does right. in the Demetrius Spectacular Spider-Man 200 issue. So we have the goodbye scene from that. Right. But Harry dies in a different way. So Peter says goodbye to Harry, and he's like, you know, I'm sorry. And he's like, I was too weak to save you. And he's like, no, you're not weak. Like, you saved me. And he's like, well, you're my best friend. And then dies. Hmm. And then uh, Peter and Ben meet on a roof the next mm-hmm. day, and basically Peter's like, I'm done. Ben, you're Peter. Here's all my passwords. You get a company, and you can <laughs> do whatever you want. See ya! And wow. as he's about to leave, Ben's like, listen, like, I could never stop. And he takes out a Spider-Man mask from his pocket, and he gives it to him. He's like, here, you're probably going to need this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Even if I'm going to be Spider-Man yeah. and have everything, you're like, going to want you're going to want be this. Spider-Man. At he's some like, point. well, good luck. So he calls up Jessica Jones and she's like, hey, guess what? You haven't called me in three days, and I thought you were dead. So I'm happy to hear you're alive, but it's over between us. And he's like, that's fair. Listen, I need the information about the guy you've been you've been tailing the entire time. She's like, here you go, bye, and then that's over. Hmm. So then Peter's like, cool. Wait, so, the guy? Yeah. So Peter yeah. goes to this like motorcycle repair shop and there's like a big biker dude standing in front of the door Peter just picks up the motorcycle with one hand and he, the guy runs away he goes inside and so there is a Ben Riley motorcycle reference yeah <laughs> there you go Ben Riley picks up the motorcycle but it's really Peter Parker but even though it's a clone so then Peter goes in and it's Norman Osborn and he's an old man and in Norman Osborn's like little like apartment house it's just it's like goblin paraphernalia yeah, goblin yeah. masks and gliders and computers yeah he remembered yeah so yeah. Peter comes in and he's like, Norman. And I love that shot of Norman. Just, hmm? Like looking over his old man glasses. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he goes, oh, Peter Parker, head of Parker Industries. You know, I'm afraid that uh, since Oscorp no longer exists. And he's like, I know. I know you've been full of shit. I know you remembered the whole time. How could I not? You're the one who told Otto who I was. You're the one who set Otto off. Uh... You're the one who set everything in motion. And I did the testing myself. You manipulated the computers to say 
that I was the clone and that Ben was the real one. Oh. And Norman goes from being an old man to being a creepy goblet old man. He's uh. like, you clever boy. Uh. Okay, so this is Peter. This is really This Peter. is Peter. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, wouldn't that have been something, though? <laughs> if you had found out that you were the regular, it would have ruined your life. Oh. Ugh. And he goes, well, I tried. Well, you know, you are going to lose a few. Well, you hang know. on, let me just pick up this pumpkin, this uh, goblin glider, and who the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, he, 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 he immediately sets into being a goblet again. He doesn't put on a costume, but he's right. like, he goes, you ruined my life by sending me to prison back in the 60s, and I never forgave you or got over it. Maybe Stark needs help with your takeover. I think Harry owns a couple of shares of... Of, of, of Parker industry stock. Maybe. You ruined your own life. Yeah. You're a goblin man. I know, but he's like, he goes, no. hey. he goes, you know, Harry has some of those those uh, those shares. Harry was always a pushover. I'll just get Harry to do it. And Peter's like, oh my God, you don't even know. You don't even know. Harry's dead, Norman. Man, Harry's dead. The guy you set off, Otto Octavius, yeah, he killed Harry. He's dead. And Norman collapses, and then he's like, Oh, it's because of you. It's you. So he sets off a goblin glider. It comes at Peter. Peter no! Peter just catches it. Nice. And he just crumples it up in his hands. And he says, it's over, Norman. And Norman stands up dramatically. He's like, it'll never be over! And then he starts to have a heart attack. Uh. And Peter catches him. And Norman is just shaking and convulsing. He goes, I hate you. And then dies. <laughs> just it, it, his yes. last breath is choked out with hate. Uh, just so perfect. Yeah. I, I find that really you. funny. I hate you. I am not uh, redeemable in any way. <laughs> Never forgive me. I'm the worst. <laughs> so he dies, and he's like, "Oh, Norman, you could have been so much more." Then he gets on a plane and he goes to Portland and he asks Mary Jane for forgiveness, oh. and they get back together. And he just lives in Portland. He's like, screw that. Yeah. And then like three weeks later. I know I'm not the clone, but I wouldn't do that shit anymore. The motorcycle mechanic's like, what's that smell? (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, it's dead old guy. (laughs) And goblin glider petroleum all over the ground. So then it's the 2000s. Yeah. And so Morlun attacks. Uh, That's right. The energy vampire. Oh, no. Morlun's attacking... (laughs) We can stop the episode. No, here, no, right? no, no, no! It's almost over. We got two more decades to get through. So uh, Morlun's attacking Peter or Ben. Oh yeah. Wait. So or what we don't know yet, right? Peter, the real jump. Peter is living in Portland with his wife and children. Just right. being a dude. Just being a dude. Just okay. He's, he's an Mary. electrical. He, I think he's like an electrical repair man. Okay. Morlun is attacking fake Peter, and he's like, "So did he tell you you were the real one, so that he would, so that it would protect him from me? Is that why?" And Peter's like. I am the real one. Screw you. And he's like, no, you're not. He cracks his neck. Oh, jeez. He's like, I'll go get him. Wow. It's just sad. You're like, no. Mm. So Peter's chopping wood out in the back because he's retired. Right. And that's over. And he's got a big grizzled beard. But there's one last mission he's got to perform. <laughs> Thanks, Arnold. I gotta go kill Morlun. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, gotta, I don't even know who he is, but I gotta kill him. Yeah. And he, he knows about Morlun because... Oh. Off panel, Ezekiel showed up and told him all about it. Uh, and Peter's like, go away. And he slams the door in his face. That's all you've ever heard. <laughs> Literally, he goes like, he finds out about Morlun because <laughs> Spider-Man's dead on TV. Oh. And Mary Jane's like, oh my God. And it's like, it's great because it's like, Spider-Man's dead. He was actually a uh, billionaire th- philanthropist, Peter Parker. <laughs> and Peter's like, oh. <laughs> Damn. Damn He's like, oh, Ben, I'm sorry. Ezekiel told me all this and I just, I just hid back here. And so he explains about this Ezekiel thing. He's like, yeah. I just told him to screw off. He said that my powers were totemic or something. <laughs> and that some dumb energy vampire was going to come for me. I thought that was dumb. And I just told him to fuck yeah, off. Yeah, that sounded like complete bullshit. Yeah. So Nonsense. I, so don't I worry, at one point it. you're going to have bone claws. <laughs> the bone claws don't come up. So Peter's like, I have to go. I got to go out there. I got to go get my company back. And Claire, his daughter, is like big into Peter being Spider-Man. She's like, Uncle oh. Ben didn't deserve to die. When J. Jonah Jameson died and Peter went to Manhattan for his funeral, it was also on 9-11. Oh. And so Peter had to get involved and he put on the mask. And mm-hmm. she saw in the like video you know, news report about it, she saw like, all the heroes getting involved. And like she saw him mm. for like a half second. She knew. And she's like, it took me a few weeks to realize, like, you had that mask with you the whole time. Like, you've you've always been waiting. That's why we live out in the woods. Mm-hmm. So you don't see anything going on. Like, you used to live in the city. You used to react to trouble. 
and you couldn't help yourself. But now that you don't see the danger and the right. trouble, you don't have to get involved. You don't feel responsible. But you still have it. Yeah, but you do, but you are and you but have to. But you are to. still responsible. Because she's like young and she's like yeah. idealistic and she's got like all the worst parts of Peter Parker. <laughs> I'm amazed they didn't name her May. Yeah. So Tony Stark is Secretary of Defense and the president's pissed at Stark because like it's been outed that a business rival of Stark's was actually a superhero and mm. Stark had the Superhero and Registration Act involved and oh. he was the and Spider-Man was actually a big like ducker of that uh, registration and right. so it looks bad yeah for this administration and you know it's been revealed that Peter Parker is you know Spider-Man but then uh, there's this big news report about Peter Parker uh, our Peter Parker goes to his friend Betty Brandt who's running a new or news organization okay. and he's like so that was Ben Riley. he was my clone he took over Spider-Man I'm really Peter Parker and I'm here to get my company back and 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 and, and you know and deal with that that's and, a weird precedent yes well he's he's got a he, he knows about this energy vampire that can't be stopped that's been living forever right he's trying to trick Iron Man and the Captain America and everybody to start a, su a, a, a superhuman civil war right here right now so that when Morlun shows up, real superheroes will stop him. Oh. So. Why doesn't he just call Iron Man? He can't, because he knows that Iron Man will be a freaking idiot about oh, it. Yeah. So, so call Cap! Well, also, Peter is feeling kind of bad about how he never really picked a side in the Civil War and he never really helped anybody and protected mm. them. So, like, Peter shows up at Parker Industries to, like, open the door and Stark's standing there and he's like, hey, so you're back from the dead, huh? <laughs> well listen register and we'll be good to go and he's like i'm not gonna do that man and stark's like well that's too bad because here's my army of like ironed up superheroes like oh. she hulk and war machine and captain marvel and stuff and uh so that's going on so uh, is captain america dead no. or struck with a time bullet he, no he's gonna show up right now oh okay <laughs> but uh mary jane and the kids ben and claire are watching this insane fiasco going on, on TV. Right. And then uh, more like Mary up. Jane has just been like on the couch watching the TV. Yeah. Like since Ben Riley died, just glued. Yeah, which is I think a really cool like reference to parents during 9-11 when that happened. Mm -hmm. I remember like my parents and were like a lot of people's parents were just like that's when they got addicted to the 24-hour news cycle. Yeah. So I like this visual of Mary Jane. Just She's on the couch while watching TV she, with her hands over her face because like she's just stuck. And now she will watch the news forever. Mm. Like, we don't really get that, but like that visual of like a concerned parental figure watching the news and not getting up because there's yeah. constant updates yeah. is, a ver is very much a product of the 2000s. Mm. And I really like that like Zdarsky was like, oh, after the 80s, who gives a shit? <laughs> Like, he actually paid painstaking effort and uh, attention to this. Yeah. To each decade. So Morlun shows up at Peter's house. He's like, hey, is Peter here? I'm going to kill him. And Peter went to New York. It's like, you couldn't could track you that? watch the news, man? No, I don't watch TV. No, he's like elemental Have you seen my cufflinks? <laughs> so, literally, Peter gets ensconced in a superhuman civil war to try and lure Mul Morlun. Morlun's on the other side of the country attacking his family. He yeah. missed the entire thing. Ugh. Yeah, it's a complete quagmire. So, well, like, Morlun should know he's not there, so he should leave. Yeah, but he's not. Yeah, because, he's not gonna, because, because now he's got something. Well, and, his, and his children have spider powers. Oh, no. God damn it. So, Spider-Man is getting his ass kicked by Iron Man. Well, Peter Parker is. Yeah. And then Cap shows up with a couple of members of the Resistance. Hawkeye, right. Luke Cage, Cloak and Dagger, <laughs> teleporting. <laughs> everybody's nice. old. Yeah, everybody's old. And uh, so there's a big fight. Meanwhile, Morlun is like, I'm gonna kill all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm a stupid character. Blah. Yeah, blah. Blah. So Ben and Claire like step I'm gonna, in. I'm gonna suck your plasma. No, right? that's 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 Morbius from the cartoon. But uh, yeah, so they're fighting. That's cool. Uh, Peter uses the commotion as a cover to break into his office mm -hmm. to then access the vault and get his Spider-Man costume. Okay. One of his many. Yeah. So Sweet. Uh, Claire is grabbed by Morlun. Morlun starts to absorb her life essence as he is wont to do because he's stupid. Yeah. And as he's absorbing her she scratches his face and he starts to bleed and they run away. Mm. And Ben and Claire put together like okay he is invincible he can't be stopped unless he's absorbing someone. Oh. So Ben's like when I'm starting to die Claire I need you to go in there and take him down. So right. then Ben launches in and Morlun starts to absorb him and then Claire swings in and hits him with a tree trunk 
and he falls on a, a jagged piece of tree and dies. Claire Through kills the chest. Yay. This is great. Morlun. Yeah. So Morlun's dead, and Ben seemingly dies. He doesn't die. But I remember oh. reading this issue and being like, oh my god, they killed Ben! Holy crap. Peter's never going to forgive himself for this, yeah. but Ben's okay. Okay. He has a rough time. He, he doesn't get to be a superhero, but he's, but he's okay. Uh, or he so loses he, his powers? Yeah, his power sucked out or whatever. I, I'm, I'm assuming. He walks, mm. with, he walks with a cane in the next decade. That's okay. all we really get. All right. But uh, so, and, and Claire has a Spider-Man woman costume. So, oh. you know, that's happening. So uh, Pete swings in in another uh, decade's worth of Spider-Man costumes. <laughs> and he's like, okay, so here's the deal. And he pushes a button that deactivates all of the ironed up huh. pro registration characters. Because he's like, I know that Tony Stark is a paranoid jackass and his fail safes in all your armors to take you down in case he needs to take you down. You can't trust Tony Stark. Uh, See? And so Tony Stark is the Batman of this world. Yes. Yeah. So they give him a hard time. Mm-mm. Tony Stark reveals that he was never in the Iron Man suit and he's a hologram. <laughs> and he's like, see you later, assholes. Yeah. What? I'm the Secretary of Defense. I'm not going to fly around in a friggin' costume. Yeah. You out of your minds? Right? Screw you. So then Pete joins up with Captain America and Cap's like, all right, let's go. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta report back to base. And Pete goes, I should warn you, Cap. Uh, I'm being chased by an energy vampire. Mm-hmm. And Cap goes, Well, son, we'll deal with it together. And <laughs> Pete goes, Son, we're both old men, Cap. <laughs> so then they leave. <laughs> Cap's like, Don't talk hey. back to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then. By uh, the way, uh, you were being hunted by an energy vampire. I'm being hunted by a Red Skull Nazi. Yeah. I get it. I'm sure Red Skull's dead. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So then we're in the 2010s. Uh, Pete has a dream. He's talking about how he's he's always been having the same dream Mm. about this burglar who he lets run past him. It's the origin. Right. Um, Does he turn into the burglar? No. No. It's just, he's just, we're we're, we're echoing the origin. Okay. But he says, this is the, I remember, I realized in the dream that this is the day the robber gets away and it feels really real, but it's different this time. So the robber starts to leave and then Mary Jane says, stop. Other people's dreams are really boring, and he's like, "Fair enough." <laughs> and they, uh, and so it turns out that Peter, who's in another Spider-Man costume, mm-hmm. uh, a space Spider-Man costume, mm. is about to board a Latvian spaceship along with Miles Morales, who also got bit by a spider that had powers, and he became Spider-Man for a time when Spider-Man thought was was thought dead between but, the, the the decades. But I thought but his t- powers were totemic. Yeah, nah, it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the the precedent here is sometime between 2001 and 2019, uh, the villains used the superhuman civil war to take over and ruin everything. Oh. Which ended the civil war and most of these other heroes like Cap and Iron Man. Spider-Man is the leader of everything now. Not oh. like the government, but he's like the leader of the superhero community. Okay. We're the... Because he's the oldest. Right. I was going to say, were the new supervillains, like, young? No, Doom did it. Oh. It was Doom and whoever was left. How is Doom not 150? We don't see Doom anymore, so my, my assumption is that magic. Doom is more or less dead. Oh. But, uh, but Doom's effect is still felt, and right. there's, like, this issue where, like, Peter and Miles' mission is they're going to go into orbit and board this, like, space station and release a pulse that will knock out Doctor Doom's energy wave that's surrounding the world they board miles is acting kind of weird he keeps referring to peter as parker peter's like okay <laughs> that's odd um they're uh they they start to activate the device uh-huh. which they need to knock out this thing yeah and peter glances out the window and sees that his spaceship is destroyed oh and he's like oh crap there's someone here and then he hears this voice come out from the darkness and it says, Peter Parker, we told you that we'd go to the ends of the earth to hunt you. Oh. And Craven Venom shows up. Oh, jeez. And it didn't activate his spider sense because the symbiote never triggered it. Oh. So we but have- he's got a sweet, like, fur symbiote vest. Yeah, it's yeah. Craven's vest and it's part of his whole thing. I love Craven Venom. That's nuts. Super cool. It's just Venom, I think. But yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Just Venom with hair. It's just Venom with hair. So, Craven attacks. Peter, uh, and so Peter and Venom, like, fight. And Wait, so was Craven like, like, 100? Right, he's got to be, like, 150 <laughs> years old, something like that. Yeah, he's just, he's really old. Uh, so then... Um, yeah, but the Venom keeps him young. 
Yeah, or right? spry, or right? what? not young, but like no. you know, it enables him to like be limber and strong. And yeah. yeah. So Peter is getting attacked by Venom, and then Miles shows up and he helps fight with Venom, and then Venom like grabs Miles by the face, and he goes, "Oh, like I'm gonna let like now I'll let the other infect you, and then I'll have you, and oh, that's amazing. Well played, old friend." And then Peter goes like, "Hey, Craven." You're not anybody's friend. And he activates this like sonic disruptor that blasts Venom apart. Yeah, there is no Craven. It's just a skeleton in there. Oh. Craven died years ago. Oh. Yay! Oh, this is geez. brilliant. Because Peter makes a comment earlier where he says, like, you know, people are worried about my enemies. All my enemies are dead. Except, well, except this one. No, he says, well, well, Miles Craven's goes, a skeleton? Dead. And he goes, I told you. All my enemies are dead. <laughs> Isn't that right, Otto? And Miles is like, oh, Parker. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> we got the friggin' Superior Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh. So then Miles and, and Peter fight. And Miles is like, how did you know? My performance was perfect. <laughs> and he's like, you called me Parker. You said funny thing. You you referred to Venom as Sergey. You like knew him. Mm. Come on. You told me my aunt was sexy. Yeah, right? <laughs> what? He goes, but you're, 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 the work you did on the like pulse that we were working on, it was outdated. And Miles Otto is like, you know, I was gonna put myself in you, but you're old. This body, I'll have years and the power. It's amazing. Uh -huh. And uh, so Miles and Peter have like this back and forth, and Miles Otto is like, I could kill you easily with this body, but it would be reward. It would be more rewarding for me to defeat you in the only way that matters with my mind. And like they like bump heads, and that somehow sends us to like a psychic plane. That's we're in the not, mindscape. We're in the mindscape. Now. <laughs> and so uh, Peter's uh. there in this like vast canvas of nothingness. Otto's there. He's Doc Ock, and he just sends the memories of Peter's villains to fight him. Uh huh. It's the Sinister Six. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we Yay. never got to see that, but now we do, and we know they existed because Peter remembers them. Mm -hmm. So uh, he sends. I like Electro six. was never in the book. But it's nope. Like, or Vulture nope. or, or Rhino. Vulture. Nope. Like, yep. we, we were, were here. here. We, we were in the book. Yeah. We were always minor. We were in the '60s, as you can tell from our costumes. <sighs> so Peter says, "You and what army?" And then he conjures himself from all his different decades. Oh, that's cool. So because Sinister Six, six decades. And, yeah. yeah. So they fight, and you know he goes, "Come on, Otto. We've done this before. We've had a lifetime of dancing," and. So Otto uses his, like, because I guess Otto's been here before. Or he's used, like, the Mindscape. Or, he, he makes himself really big. Uh, and he's like, ah, I'm bigger than you now. Right. What are you going to do? What, what clever trick are you going to try on me? And then Aunt May appears before him. Oh. And she just has this disappointed look on her face. And she goes, Otto, oh, why? what are you doing? What have you done? <laughs> yeah. Mm. He goes, it's not fair that you, got to di that you died and that I was going to die. And she goes, well, it's not, what's not fair is taking a young man's life so that you can try and cheat death a little longer. That's what's mm. not fair. And he says, you you need to let go of your hate. You thought that, like, I loved Peter more than you, or that, like, there was some competition between the two of you. But the reality is there's no limit on love. But I did love him more than you. <laughs> well, I mean, so, he's my nephew. I right. mean, now I, I do, like a son. because you're a monster. Right. Well, but no, I didn't. But, but Aunt May basically says, like, I've never stopped. Like, I love you. Yeah. And then she goes, come on, you have to let it go. And he goes, I'm really scared, May. And he goes, it'll be okay. And then Otto just puffs into dust. Mm. And Peter goes, wow, I've never defeated a villain using a hug before. And Aunt May's like, well, everybody wants something. And it's almost never world domination. Mm. And Peter says, so what do I want, Aunt May? And he goes, well... What you really want, like, you've had it all. You've gotten to live a very long life. You've had children. You've had a wife. You've had two wives. Uh, but what you've always wanted is to save Ben. And you can't do that. Mm. So you'll have to settle for saving everybody. The image of Aunt May kind of cracks and explodes. And he wakes up. And the window that was protecting them from space, <laughs> from their fight, explodes. Uh, Peter rescues Miles. And then, uh, sh and then, and then he goes to the back of the ship. They've set off the pulse. They're ready to go. And oh, uh, and he webs close the uh, the the wall. He escaped. Yeah, the hole. Yeah, the hole. He plugs the hole with his webbing. Cool. And uh, and he runs to the back to the escape pods. There's only one. And he's mm. like, there's only ever one parachute. <laughs> it's time to hug. <laughs> so, yeah, real close. So he shoves Miles in there, and Otto Miles is like, Parker, what are you doing? Is somebody's got to stick around, and make sure it goes off. 
Was he, he got, auto miles anymore? Or he's, he's miles. He's still auto. Oh. I thought he vaporized or whatever. He vaporized yeah, I he in the mind. No, no, he's he still he goes, You gotta make you gotta fulfill your promise. You gotta give this poor kid his life back. Oh, I see. And he goes, No, let me help. We can save everybody. He goes, sorry, buddy. I can't let you sacrifice a life that isn't yours. Mm. And he sends him out. So Peter's by himself on this dis- uh, this ship. It's cracking. It's falling apart. You know, it's got two minutes before the pulse is going to be activated and save everybody. Right. Um, so he, he webs everything. He's run out of webbing. And he's just holding the ship together with his, with his hands. And then, like, the wall opens up and he's just exposed to open atmosphere. Uh-huh. And he's just like, ah, oh, crap. It's only got 40 seconds. He, gets, yeah. he has to keep the ship together so that it can activate the pulse. He's got 40 right, seconds left. Right. And he's like, I'm sorry, everybody. I failed. And then the hole gets plugged by the symbiote. Just this big tapestry plugging the hole. Oh, Aww. wow. That's sweet. I like that it still has, mm. like, it doesn't have the face. It just has the Spider-Man logo. Yeah. It's like, you were always the best part of it. I, I remember this, this, this image, and I remember seeing it for the first time and thinking, like, oh, my God. Like, I thought it was that the symbiote didn't let go of its hate, and it was like, I'm not going to let it kill you, I'm going to kill you. Oh. But, like, no, it, it's that it wouldn't, it never stopped loving him. Oh. So, then Peter kind of like... Oh my god, it's a crazy ex-girlfriend! Yeah. <laughs> so then Peter, like, falls back into the into his memories, mm-hmm. and he's talking to Mary Jane, and, she, and he says, I think everything's going to be okay. He calls her his jackpot, and the whole ship explodes. And then we cut to, a little later, uh, they've had Peter's funeral... Miles is back, and he's talking to Otto, who is back in his old body, which is on, like, life support. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I was really going to kill you for what you've done, for all the years you stole from me and for all, Mm. like, the shit you pulled with Peter and everything, but that's not what Peter would do, and that's not what I'm going to do. So he leaves Otto to kind of just, like, rot in this, like, iron lung. Instead, I'm going to lead you to this waking nightmare. Yeah, yes. it's almost worse. Yeah. Maybe you should have just killed no, him. No, 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 It's morally no. better to let him be like that. <laughs> so then uh, Miles meets up with Mary Jane, and he talks about how he, he doesn't want to, like, he doesn't even know what he is. Mm. Like, he lost years. He meets people. They knew him as Otto. It's just kind of, like, really messed up. Yeah. And she goes, maybe you need a fresh start. And she gives him Peter's original Spider-Man costume. Nice. And so Spider-Man will always be carrying on. And then we cut back to Peter remembering his dream. And Peter's talking about how, you know, like, I always have the same recurring dream about the burglar and about how I let him get away, about the day Uncle Ben died. It was so real. And I'm back there again, and I know what you're going to say, but this isn't me beating myself up again. It's different this time. It's a good dream. And he webs the guy. And he webs the guy. And the last shot is is Spider-Man throwing out his web. Like, to prevent everything. Right, right. This is kind of like... That, I love that poetic ending to this. Yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't open with a dream, so it's not completely booking it. Right, but right. Like, For a minute, I thought it was going to be Miles wearing the original suit. Oh, and then this In happens. the similar situation. That would be really cool. And it's like he learned from Peter to be like, yeah. no, yeah. this is what we do. But not even like Peter told him the story. Just like, this is... Just, yeah. just naturally. Yeah. And Peter gets to like relive that through him in a way. Yeah, yeah. But no, I no, like that this is the dream. <laughs> but it's just the dream he has. Miles so, opens up the suit... I'm sorry. Did you wash this? <laughs> this just reeks of weed. Yeah. You know, that was the 60s. <laughs> yeah. I, I was keeping it under my stash. There, there's also a ton of awesome variant covers that, like, depict the eras they're from. I nice. love the 90s one because it's just, like, egregious. <laughs> it's just a mess. It's just a total it's mess. All this Very McFarlane stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's McFarlane spaghetti oh, That's great. Spider-Man Life Story, like I said, it's... It's a perfect encapsulation of who Peter Parker Spider-Man is. It's a really neat convention I've never really seen. Yeah. It's like, what if they grew up? What if Peter Parker was old? You know, if, if it was 19 or 2019, <laughs> what if, he'd be like 70. What if they just yeah. let him age? Right. <laughs> let him age and die. This is yeah. the yeah. entire life. Yeah. yeah. It's his life story. It's impressive. Yeah. So I'll put a link in the description. Get this. Buy it. If you like Spider-Man, you should own it already. If you don't, I'll, I'll forgive you, but just go down there and pick it up. No. It's, 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 it's worth it. Uh, yeah, they don't do this. I, and it's funny because, like, as much as I loved it, I love it as a thing that exists over here. Mm-hmm. Like, people keep talking about how they want to see these heroes, like, grow up and yeah. get old and stuff. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> like, and if you do, you only want to see the end. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to see... That's why people like Dark Knight Returns so much. Like, what if Batman got old and, end, and it ended? Mm-hmm. And it's why people don't like the sequel so much because it just keeps going Yeah, it's on. like, no, it's supposed to be the end. It just stops. I mean, like, the fact... I remember as a kid... Picking up Dark Knight Returns and like really not liking the ending because he doesn't die. Oh yeah. I was like, that's cheap. But as I get older, I'm like, no, Batman doesn't stop. He will die. Right. 
you know what's going to happen. Like yes, he's eventually going to die. It. He will like, die. You don't need to see it. So, but it, you know, but but it's that kind of idea. Yeah. I don't know if I want to call this the Dark Knight Returns of Spider-Man because it's it not. actually starts with him being young and goes to being old. Right. No, is it the life story? It's his this life. This makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But I, I would like to see this treatment done with more things. Yeah. Um, that's a really cool idea. And I could see spinoffs and stuff. I remember in like the, I don't remember what year it was, what, what decade they took place in, but uh, I think it was the, the 2000s. Stark makes a comment about how they finally caught Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> like we don't see Daredevil at all, right? And I remember Zdarsky was like, "I want to put Daredevil in here because like they're they're friends, like they have a they have a relationship." Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both street level superheroes. Yeah, yeah. but you know, yeah. he's like, "There's it's only, so only much room, room for so much." Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but it, but it, it looks really great. It's really cool. I was I thought what they were gonna do was Bagley did issue one because he's like a seminal Spider Man artist. I thought it was each era was gonna be drawn by a different seminal Spider Man artist. Mm -hmm. Um. But it's just Bagley throughout, which is actually kind of good. It, it maintains the tone. It doesn't change. Yeah. It doesn't change. It doesn't change the whole like feeling of the book. It's just a, it's just this whole cohesive thing. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with an all-new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. <laughs> Better. <laughs> oh, good. I, I would hate to hear you say worse after that. Oh, no. Oh, I gotta go. <laughs> oh, that was bad. <laughs> Give me a garbage can. <laughs>